So let's take a look at some add-ons that are going to help you do the fuck you want to do quickly and easily. Have you easily? Have you ever tried to scatter objects in Blender? I don't just mean using the lazy, inefficient way of geometry nodes or the particle system, where everything looks too random and evenly distributed at the same time. I mean using Blender's underrated bullet physics system so the objects don't intersect. I'm sure you have, but probably gave up because Blender's bullet physics engine is underserved with little to no tools to make it usable. But at least now we have Scatterflow. These are the tools that finally make the physics engine really useful. You can emit RBD objects, so piling up debris is super easy. Want to fill a drum with garbage? Just emit garbage in the drum. Want to throw objects around? Easy, grab them and throw them around. No other method makes objects scatter as naturally as the physics engine. So yeah, this is the way. Now let's talk about something else Blender really needs. Optimization. Blender doesn't come with a lot of optimization tools, so most of the time you have to do it yourself, which means you also have to know how to optimize, from reducing polygon density, handling texture sizes, using proxies, and more. Even when you're good at it, optimization is draining. It takes too much time to create LODs, and in some cases it's impossible without some form of automation, like what this add-on does. SceneBoost can switch out high-poly objects with low-poly versions when the objects are too far, reduce their texture resolution, and make Blender not only render scenes faster, but also give you a more responsive viewport. You probably have like 100 HDRI images on your drive, so why would you need more? Well, do your HDRIs look like these? If they do, please share them because I want to compare. I swear, I've never seen clean and sharp-looking HDRIs like in this pack. Most HDRI collections just look uninspiring, so they create boring images. They're usually outdoors, daytime environments, or empty rooms, so the lighting and reflections they generate have no rich details. Remember, while HDRIs are mostly meant for lighting, they show up in reflections as refractions, and they create shadows and different color tones in your image. If the HDRI you use produces the same result as Blender's sky texture, why are you even using one? Your HDRIs should create rich, detailed reflections, high contrast lighting, if that's what you want, and each image should drastically change the look of your scene. Otherwise, if they all look kind of similar, what's even the point of having so many? So yeah, take a look at this collection and let me know what you think in the comments. If you're new in town, you probably don't know why everyone gets hyped when they see a new building generator. While there are quite a number of them now, each comes with some new features, like this flex building generator. You only need a few extrusions and you're good to go. You get different designs and several props for the roofs, like AC units, towers, water tanks, shades, and more. Plus, the level of customization you get for individual buildings. This generator is great, especially if you want to create a building that stands out and you want to control the silhouette yourself, but not all the other tedious details that take too much time, like, like windows and doors. It also comes with parallax interiors, so when the camera flies by, the interiors actually look like interiors, not just flat textures. Now, compared to the city generator, you don't get the same level of customization for each building, but you can create entire cities in one sitting, including traffic, streets, full city blocks, and the whole thing can be exported to other engines like Unreal Engine. So if you want close-ups, I recommend the Flex Building Generator. But if you want an urban sprawl, the City Generator won't disappoint. Speaking of cities, they need crowds, they need signs, they need detail. The Diffuse Studio, who makes add-ons like Procedural Crowds, Procedural Alleys, Procedural Stadium, and Breakdown, just released a bundle that includes all of them. So if you're looking for detail, this is it. You can have people roaming your city streets, chanting in stadiums, chilling at the beach, and you can throw in some neon signs in your scenes as well, all with the help of this bundle. You basically have years of work compressed into seven products, so you can do your projects all relaxed. Before we continue with more tools, shout out to the Advanced Blender Effects course, course for tackling taboo topics in Blender, like showing how to make science animations and advanced effects. Like, why don't we see these types of tutorials on YouTube? Anyway, if you want to make microorganisms, ads, and, and special effects, take a look at this course. Going back to more tools for lazy artists, how about just getting models that are already made, textured, and your only job is to turn them into something interesting? 
Well, that's what Top Channel One-on-One -on -one is producing, starting with his Destruction Pack collection, which includes a number of objects you can use in destruction scenes. We're talking broken walls, slabs, exposed rebar, debris, and more. This is the first set in the pack, and he says more is to be added, so you can take a more relaxed approach in your art creation. Who doesn't want that? Not to be political, but let's make art stress-free again.